one B2, how to get your visitor visa or your short-term visa approval. In this video, I'll give you a couple tips, three things, three must know about B1 and B2 visa, and hopefully it's going to help you uh, at your interview at the US consulate office, outside of the US, of course. course. My name is Bijun Gwanda. For those who do not know me, I'm an immigration lawyer here based in DC. I do work with individuals across the country and around the world because we're dealing with complex immigration laws and we're dealing with complex immigration cases. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're not new, welcome back. Thank you for subscribing and please don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos if you enjoy the content please go ahead and share like don't forget to comment below also don't forget to join us on our private facebook group because we are answering questions over there at least once a week or twice a week so you can post your first question as well and hopefully we'll be able to reach out to you and answer your question let's get right into it First of all, before I go into the strategies, I would like to talk a little bit about the mindset of the officer or the framework of the officer when they are interviewing you for the B1 or B2 visa. The officer framework or mindset is that you are an intended immigrant. The moment you apply for B1 or B2, the assumption is that you are an intended immigrant simply means that you are going to the u.s with the intention to stay there not to come back so they go to that interview with that mindset so it's the burden is on you to prove them the contrary to prove them that no you you are just going for a visit or you're going for pleasure or you're going for business and you're going to come back to your country of origin the burden of proof is on you, okay? So, now, three things you must know. Number one, you have to be able to show strong ties. Strong ties to your country of origin. How do you show that? If you have a family, you have to tell them that you're married and you have children, especially if they're at the tender age, younger age, so pretty much that can convince the officer to know that this person's not just gonna go there and leave his own children alone just like that with the wife you can also show that with um, businesses if you have businesses in your country or estate you have a house you own a house you own a business you can show that you have strong ties to your country of origin you're not going to the u.s to just stay there really for what or the job like if you work and you get paid a good salary especially to the standard of your country right compared to similarly situated people in your country in your type of work the type of job that you do in your country you can show that you have a job and you get paid well and there's no intention for you to just come to the u.s and stay there for what right so you can show strong ties the moment you show strong tie basically you'll be able to convince them right that's number one number two the purpose of your trip what is the specific reason why you're going to ask that b1 b2 visa for example let's say you're coming for visit or pleasure you want to visit for example the statue of liberty or you want to visit disneyland you have to show them pretty much precisely the hotel room that you book in new york if you're visiting the uh, statue of liberty or the hotel room that you book in uh, orlando if you're visiting disneyland or disney whatever that is in orlando right the biggest attraction there you have to show them that you have to show them tickets for the entrance where you are going exactly and the type of activity that you'll be doing if you have that one uh like plan out like it is like you can show it those documentation proof receipt you should be fine 
really should be found. That's the second point. And the last point, I believe the most important one, you have to show financial statement. Who's going to support your trip? Are you the one supporting your own trip? Please show your own banking statement. Of course, with transactions showing that you have money in the bank and you are able to support your own trip. You pay for your expenses. For example, if somebody else is supporting you, then you ha that person has to show their financial statement as well, showing that they are able to support you. If you're going to live at their house, they can show that they have a house or an apartment of three bedrooms, etc., etc. So they have to be able to show how you are going to support yourself because they don't want you to become a public charge. For people who live here, they know the notion of public charge. So basically, they don't want you to come here, stay here and rely on government, government benefit. So those are the three things that you must know. Once you master how you're going to answer those questions or how you're going to prove to the U.S. officer at the consulate or at the embassy that you are not an intended immigrant, that you are going there basically for that specific purpose that you lay out on your application, they will be able to issue the visa. So you have to have some credibility for that. But let's say, for example, there's an issue of inadmissibility. Uh, perhaps something happened in the past. You were banned from entering. Then at least you will be informed on how to apply for a waiver. And if a waiver applies in your case. Okay, you got it. Three things. Just go do your interview. If you need help, please call the office 202-751-2180. Email Bijou, that's Gwanda, ESQ at gmail.com. Consultation fees apply as usual. Um, until next time, bye-bye.